the Royal Tasmanian Botanical Gardens is a beautiful place and plays a leading role in the conservation and cultivation of rare and threatened plant species. The curator of the Tasmanian Flora Collection is Chris Lang. So how important is it that your plants look good? It's critically important. We have a collection of exotics and natives here at the gardens that are enormously precious, and we don't want to compromise their health. We adopt an integrated pest management approach to the way we manage our pests and diseases that uses monitoring to determine whether any action should be taken. If we do, I mean, there's a sort of broad sweep of approaches there, you know, including biological, cultural, physical and chemical control. And chemical control is an absolute last resort. First up, let's learn a bit about physical control. We're standing here at the front gate, Tino, and this really is the first line of defence. The points of entry into the gardens, whether it be the tradesman's entrance or with a public manoeuvre through into the gardens. It starts here and we really want people not to bring in um, any plants. There's all sorts of pests and diseases, you know, that could be on that posy of flowers or, you know, whatever people, you know, that plant that people want identified or... So, yeah, it really starts here. So we ask that people just don't bring any plant material into the gardens at all. A, a photo is a much better option. There's another physical control that is undertaken frequently in the gardens. It's a tried and true method of controlling weeds that every gardener knows. Pulling them out by hand. Mate, the spring flowering bulbs, they put on a magnificent display. Yeah, it's, it's a great display, isn't it? A real burst of colour. It's not just plant material being carried in that poses a threat. Sometimes the danger can be lurking on visitors' shoes. Oh, the little heath. Yes, yeah, look, this is, um, this is one of our rare and threatened species. It occurs only in southern Tasmania. There's just one population and that's, that's it. The main threatening process is a soil-borne pathogen called Phytophthora cinnamomi or, or root rot. Now, in places like this, in botanic gardens, we want to maintain them in good health and we want to keep those soil-borne pathogens out. And the best way of doing that, you know, is to ensure that, you know, when people visit, that their footwear is really nice and clean, you know, there's no adhering mud or soil, and really importantly, you know, that they don't step on the garden beds. Next, cultural control. This is all about the right plant in the right place and adjusting care to make them less favourable to pests. Yeah, so this is the Tasmanian native section, Tino, and this area is divided up to represent various uh, habitat types um, that are found naturally in Tasmania's flora. Yeah. And the cultural requirements are quite different and vary through the length of the collection. So this end represents rainforest species and, you know, cool, cool temperate rainforest species, wet forest species. And then down the far end, it's sort of, you know, dry forest and coastal. And the way we garden at this end is sort of quite different to the other end in terms of irrigation input and fertilising. The right plant in the right spot is pretty fundamental, isn't it? We certainly want to do that. And we want to ensure that when we buy our plants, you know, that we check them for pests and diseases, and we, you know, we're getting really good healthy stock in. Simple observation is one way of staying one step ahead of destructive plant diseases. Myrtle rust is, is a big issue in Australia. It's been on the mainland for some time. It's more recently made its way down here to, to you know, Tasmania. But it's having, you know, a, a fairly devastating impact specifically targets members of the Myrtaceae family. It's a big, big Australian family, Melaleucas and Eucalypts, etc. So, you know, and plants like this, Syzygium, there, there are many plants uh, that are potential hosts for this disease. We're and part of a coordinated surveillance effort with other botanic gardens. It's part of the plant sort of sentinel uh, program. And we have a number of species here through the gardens that we're monitoring and checking for five key pests and diseases, including myrtle rust. And then there's biological control. So what's your approach here in the nursery area? Well, you know, as part of a balanced pest management program, we like to attract the good guys. 
And if you look down here, you know, we've got this habitat oh, yeah. beneath our benches. So we've allowed these plants to grow and establish. Hardenbergia violacea, which is in flower, and this dilidium, or trigger plant, and there's some lobelia. So, yeah, you know, there's a few species here, but, you know, these plants attract those beneficial insect things like hoverflies and lacewings and all, you know. So what's with the rose pruning? Well, this is to provide a nesting opportunity for native bees. So the bees just nest in the ends of the branches here, and it you know, provides ideal habitat for that purpose. When the local insects aren't enough to manage pest outbreaks, the nursery team buy in some outside help. Well, this is a little bottled army. This is Persimilis. This is a predatory mite. These are commercially available. They're mass reared for use in commercial situations and even on a smaller scale in a home garden. Um, you could use them as well. I mean, we've purchased these for use in our glass houses against uh, two spotted mites. They'll kill something like seven adults in a day or 20 immature two-spotted mites, you know, so they're really, really effective. And finally, the last resort, chemical control. Look, strictly speaking, um, integrated pest management um, includes the use of, of chemicals, potentially. You only use them as a last resort. They tend to be indiscriminate in terms of what they kill. You're taking out not only the target pest, but also beneficial organisms as well. And you create a whole ecological niche that pests can reinvade, and you know, you've just got ongoing problems and issues. There are lots of useful lessons to take away from the integrated pest management system used by the Royal Tasmanian Botanical Gardens. Now, your place might not be as big as this, but it does work on a smaller scale. So try it out at your place. <laughs>